Alright, welcome to another Silverado episode. So, I got a lot of questions about my last video about changing the transfer case motor. It's actually my most commented on video ever that I thought I would share you some diagnostic tips, tricks, and how-tos for the dreaded service four-wheel drive light. And I built a fault into my own truck because I just recently experienced this. And it was something besides the transfer case motor it was wrong. And I'm going to go through all the steps that I think you should take to determine whether or not the transfer case motor is actually bad before you change it and how to find the fault that I ran into. So <clears throat> if we turn the truck key on, you can see all my buttons illuminated and then it's just it's in two-wheel drive right now. Now let's see what happens when I try to put it in four. Oh, service four-wheel drive. Yep, it doesn't even try now. Yep, doesn't even try. Service four-wheel drive. Right there. So, the first and the most easiest thing to check is the switch. Now what you're going to want to do, sorry I had to slide in the truck a little bit, is put your foot on the brake, turn your key on, put the truck into neutral. Don't turn the truck on, just turn the key on. And then, or put it all the way down to one, excuse me, all the way down to one. And then you're going to take, let's see if I do this with one hand. Yeah, I hear you. And drop your steering column down. And then you can pop, just pull it. This just comes right off. If your cell phone adapter thingy isn't stuck on there. Anyways, once you get this finagled up and off. How do I take this stupid thing off? Hang on. There we go. That stupid thing's off now. And you throw this away. Off to the side. And there it is. And now the switch. What you gotta do, let's see if I can do this with one hand. If I can't do it with one hand, you lift up on this little tab up top. I kinda get it started out. Oop, pull the whole thing out. I may not have enough strength in there. Oh, there's the other tab is over here on this side. I don't think I can do this one-handed. Anyway, you pull this tab and that tab, this pops out. And then you got your two wiring connections in the back, you just grab the little pull clip thingy, unclip, unclip. Leave them all together. Alright, I'm going to cut to the chase real quick. Bada bing. Alright, now with a little help from a screwdriver, you pry this side open and it pops right out like that. Here's your two wire connectors. Sorry, I had to put my screwdriver down. Two wire connectors, and they come apart. Uh, right there's the one tab. Grab a hold, pull back on the tab. Pull this wire out. You want to lift this tab slightly, and it'll pull right out. And then do the same thing with this one. You pull this tab, and that'll pull right back out. All right, but lo and behold, I have a spare. Oop, sorry, that way. A spare switch. Which is already hooked up to our multimeter. Now what you want to do is you want to set your multimeter to ohms. This is an ohm uh, capacitor check. And a lot of multimeters say OL for open line when there's no uh, connectivity. But this one says 1. And literally the number one and what we're going to be looking for is as I go through I'm going to push these buttons go right down the line and if we have any of them that flicker or change a whole bunch or go to open line once they've uh, you're going to push it it's going to change and it should stable out and once it does stabilize out if it's got any reading other than one I'd say you're good so here we go And it's not moving. Let's go to the next one. It's probably 91.5. That little bit's nothing. Next one. I'm sorry, the last one. And I think I forgot to mention, so I'm going to mention it now. These are hooked to the very... Um, centermost posts. So, if you take this off, and you take this off, 
you look in there, you can see all those posts. One, two, three, four on that one, and I think there's like a dozen on this one. You want to go on the two that are closest together on opposite end. Okay? You can do this with uh, a multimeter with just a touch ones, but um, whenever you do that, you have to. Uh, you can, I can't do it with one hand because I got to hold the multimeter in place then. But let's go on to part two of this mystery, shall we? All right, the next step is do I hear my motor shifting? So I'm going to stick you guys down close to the running board. So I think you can get the best chance to hear whether or not my motor is moving, but that would be the next thing I would be looking to check. It's actually audible. Alright, did you guys hear that? And all I'm doing is switching. Like you can hear it audibly moving. Again, we still got the service four wheel drive code. So let's go on to step two. Alright, and for our next inspection, we're going to go under the truck on this piece of cardboard. We are going to do a visual inspection of our transfer case shift motor wires. This has happened to me twice where this wire, for whatever reason, GM runs it from the motor, your shift motor, up and over the drive shaft to this connection. Now, what happens, what's happened to me twice, is this wire has fallen down onto the drive shaft and rubbed through the protective insulation and just nicked these wires and any damage at all to these wires just get you a new motor don't even mess around don't try to change any other thing uh, I know you I know you're what you're thinking you said it wouldn't be about changing the motor I, I know because we're not because look these wires are perfectly fine and we heard this thing move what I think happens is whenever you nick one of these wires, it changes the resistance in the wire just enough where the motor will think it's in the right position, but it actually isn't. So, we looked at these wires, looked at this, looks good. Let's move on and troubleshoot some more, shall we? One of the other things to check under the driver's side of your truck is these wire connections right here that go straight to the frame. This is where your entire four-wheel drive system grounds. This is where all the grounds are. Everything goes from positive to ground. So if you take those, I think they're 10 millimeter bolts out, you can polish that metal up a little bit, stick them back down and see if it works. We're gonna assume I tried that and it failed, cause I know it did, cause I did do it at one point, but it's been a little while and that stuff rusts up real good. A lot of salt and debris gathers up right there, so we're just going to assume that those grounds are good because uh, it'll lead into what I'm going to next. Alright, I still didn't put my dash together, but I'm showing you the battery ignition is in the on position. And the next one we're going to get back underneath the truck. I got the side jacked up just so it's easier to film. What we're looking for, and on the Z71s, I think there's a skid plate that goes right in this area. Mine does not have because it is not the off-road package, but you're looking for this. This is your front differential actuator. It's a little electric actuator that pushes into this pipe, and what it does is it pushes the gears together here so that your front axle is turning. Now you just want to take your thumb and just pop that right off like that. And the first way I'm going to check this is with my power probe. Now, I know what you're saying, I don't have a power probe. Well, I'll go over that too in a minute. But there's four wires in here. Even though there's five connectors, you see one of them blank. It's this top one here. But we're going to go, we're just going to touch to them and see what we get. So let me back out. One of them should be battery voltage. The others 
Yep, there's your battery voltage, 11.5 volts. There's basically nothing. Once again, basically nothing. And once again, basically nothing. Now, what's neat about the power probe is it will also show you... I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, there it is. A ground. Okay, because I'm grounded to the battery that's grounded to the frame. Well, you'll notice, absently missing. is my ground. None of these. That one's registering on the red positive side. But none of these are doing it. So, I think we have a problem. Now, just to show you with a multimeter, because I already got mine kind of hooked up. See, it's sitting there. It's on DC voltage. Okay, and I ran the ground lead up and just kind of scratched it into a piece of the frame. And you can do with this lead just about the same thing. Not much. There's basically battery voltage. If I have both hands pushing it together, it might get a better contact. And touching the other one. And that. But anyway, if you were going to see a ground. You should get should be almost zeros when you touch it. There it is. See that negative the ground? Sorry, it took me a little while to find ground. I just touched the same bolt. But you should get something like close to that for a ground. Alright, so ground. Well, in this connector I know the ground is the black wire. Just because even if you really want to figure it out, that was some Google search and you look in there. And the black wire is actually this top wire here, which should have got us to a ground. Now you can chase it. I grab my light. If you chase that wire, sorry if I blinded anybody, up on your truck, you are going to find it goes right into the wheel well it's all right to right there don't go by that blue connector because I'm going to explain it in a minute but oh yeah let's see if you can see it I can see it plain as day, but it's this connector right here. It's a little four pin connector. It's a little hard to get to. But anyway, I chased it to here, popped it apart, checked the black wire, still had no ground. So what I did was, rather than chase it the whole way, there, I just unplugged it. I went ahead, because I'm up in the engine bay and it's pretty clean in here, and I put a vampire connector is what we call these and I jumper this blue wire because well I figured this wire could be broke just about anywhere and a ground is a ground is a ground is a ground you're never going to short circuit out a ground because it is in a, by definition basically a short and I connected up this blue wire blue wire woo blue wire and I ran the blue wire up and over to That firewall. And uh, that little ground there. I think it's an engine ground. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, I just popped a little ring terminal on there. Connected up this ground. Get me a little wrench tightening action on it. that sucker on 
I have to put the camera down to plug up. So well, maybe I won't. I'm getting pretty good at this one-handed mechanics. But all right. Sorry, right there is the rest of the plug. Just a little four-wire plug. Let me see if I can stick this together with one hand. Oh, there it went. Ta-da! Alright, now we're going to go back under. I'm just going to use the power probe this time. And, let's see what we got on that black wire. Ta-da! Can you see that? There. We got a ground again, so let's go see what we let's go see what happens. We'll plug this sucker back in. Got it all plugged back in. Now, let's see what happens. Huh, it's in four wheel drive. It's not just sitting there blinking. And that motor sounds a lot more positive. Well, let me turn it off. Turn it back on, reset the code. I gotta add some oil apparently. Ha! We fixed it. Oh yeah, four though you gotta put it in neutral, but Ah, uh, and that's a winner. So, that all in all, that was a fix that took me forever to find, and it literally cost me like a dollar. Maybe, probably not even that, like 19 cents to fix. I got a piece of spare wire that I had laying around. To fix it, when I was troubleshooting, I got stupid, I just started changing parts, that's how I ended up with a spare one of these. I changed the transfer case shift motor, which, also didn't fix anything because you know that's the first thing you do in these Chevys right this switch and the motor I got so frustrated I went ahead and I changed the computer which the computer is down I'll show you about where that is I don't think I can film it but it's basically in this section right here but it's back like this side of the dash like you go up under right there I got my hand on it but it's on this side it's not on the firewall and Um, anyways, I ended up, I, I, I was throwing parts at it, and I kind of got pissed at myself. So, I took, and I decided I wanted the codes read, so I took it to a garage that will remain unnamed, and the mechanic in there put his computer on it, and said, you needed a new front axle actuator, which, I already suspected there was something wrong up there, so I had one in the glove box. I says, hey, can you throw it on, because, you know, I paid for the hour. And he's all like, oh, okay. So he put it on, which, by the way, if you got to change it, all you need to do is take, I'm sorry, I'll put stuff away. You need to take a good-sized pair of channel lock pliers or something of the like. And it literally, it literally just, you put your channel lock pliers on it here, and you literally just unscrew the whole thing. It screws into this base. So this whole thing, if I was to twist it, it would screw right out. But anyway, oop, I took and let him put the new mo new actuator in. He goes, whoa, uh, you need to get me a good one, uh, not a used one. And I was like, dude, it was brand new. I says, it was in the box. It was $87 at AutoZone. And he's like, well, that one's definitely bad. Cause you're only getting like one volt. And I'm like, dude, can I can I come out and look? And he had his multi. Well, actually, he had his power probe sitting there. And I have a power probe, as you can see. And I says, well, uh, can I look at it? What you're looking at? And he and I unplugged it just like he did. And he's telling me it's only getting one volt. 
And I'm like, dude, I says, according to your meter here, I got like 13 volts here. Apparently my battery's not as fully charged as it was back in, but you get the idea. And then he got jacked, ran me out, because I guess I showed him up. And he said, bring it back, I'll fix it, you got a huge wiring problem, blah, 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 blah. So I was driving home, and I was thinking about, well, what, the, what would make the computer say it had battery voltage, but it didn't, like, it does have battery voltage, but the computer thinks it doesn't. And then it hit me, I says, the thing's made out of plastic, so it needs a ground wire. And the ground wire is one of those wires down here. So... I could have chased that wire the whole way. It eventually would have led me here. I knew that. But one way or another, that wire is either broke, contaminated, no good, something went wrong with it, blah, 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 blah. So I just said to heck with it. And I put that little buck connector on, tied in this little blue wire that almost nobody will ever notice because it rides like normally back air. I got it kind of undone for right now. And everything was fixed. And that was after I spent almost a thousand dollars in parts trying to figure out what was wrong so I don't want that to happen to you guys I don't want you to get ripped off by a shop that's how I checked it um, just I'm right now if you got a four-wheel drive problem it costs you like two minutes to go ahead buck connect that wire and throw it on anyway just to see if that works it costs you almost nothing but there you got it and that's my story. I'm going to go in the house now and probably get yelled at for being out here too long. But, hey, that's married life. Okay, right. mm, bye-bye. Oh, yeah, and if, I know I said goodbye already, but if you did that little trick and all those tests and you think your motor might be bad, I'll link in my video on how I not only oop, took that motor out, and how I did it, but a cheaper fix than replacing the whole motor. Unless you got one of the, like broken damaged wires or something broke with the case, there's a little cheap alternative fix that usually works. Okay? But that's it. We're out for real this time. Alright, sometimes you can shoot a video and then look at what you shot and say, boy, I explained all that and I don't even really understand it but anyway oh, dang it here's what I got going on I have a simple circuit here and it's meant to explain a little better what I was talking about whenever I was talking about losing a ground and explain in more detail how to check with a multimeter so here's my simple circuit you got your battery battery positive is on this side battery negative is on this side okay it's just a four-wheeler battery but anyway we're gonna pretend that the vice here is my truck okay and these lights are well lights this is just trailer lights 12 volt circuit the ground from the battery is going to the let's say the frame that we use the jaws is the frame of the truck or the truck in general okay the lights are getting their power from this side of the battery which is coming over connecting to that wire right there they'll call that a junction and powering the lights and then the ground returns here Oop, kinda of fell down to this wire which comes back up to the blue wire and back to the frame okay so everything's all hunky-dory right now now if I take and let's say I disconnect we have a break in our wire or ground wire boom the lights went out okay now most people assume whenever you lose your lights that you lost your power there's no power going to it but if we check from the frame to our battery power even through this wire we're going to get voltage 
Oops, sorry, you can't see that. But yeah, there's about 12 volts right there. Ba bam. So we know we got 12 volts going to our lights for 11.99 volts. So that was that is obviously not our problem. But why is it still not lighting up? Well, the reason it's not lighting up is because we lost our ground. So the way to check to see if you got a good ground, and we're going to go off this junction here on the wire, is to check turn your multimeter over to ohms. Okay. We're going to be looking for a ground. Leave your negative side of your multimeter hooked up to ground, which in our case is the frame. Take your positive lead and touch it and you get nothing. Nothing changes as you touch it. Wait, I should put that over. Nothing changes. Yeah, that blip was just a, I call it ghost voltage. But there's nothing really there. So, from our frame ground to there, we have no ground. Actually, you can even go straight to the battery, which is what the power probe does. All the power probe is doing when you touch a dual wire is it's checking for power, it's checking for continuity to ground. See, we got nothing. But, if I was to take and add this piece of wire, sorry, I gotta chase it out. And I don't know if you've seen that blip on there, but I'll explain how that happened. And all I gotta do is touch it back to the frame of your vehicle. And if I touch the frame, oops, sorry, I'm not holding it very well. Boom, there's our lights again. Because we got a good ground again. And because the whole frame of your vehicle is connected directly to the battery ground, you could touch it in any spot and get ground. So all I did was there was a break in the wire somewhere between here and the frame and rather than finding it I grounded it to the body which everything is all connected your body is bolted to the frame so therefore if you connect it to the metal on the body which we'll call this the well, it's naturally the body of the vice the jaws of the frame you know they light up if you connect it to mm, let's say the engine the engine is usually connected to the body to the frame back to the battery it's only on the ground side. You will never get voltage on the ground side, but what you will get is continuity. So if we do have a good ground, here's what you'll get. Once you hook your battery up, your multimeter up, whenever you have good continuity. Let me take this back off here. One second. I gotta do this one-handed. Hold on. Alright, all I did was I used my clamp to clamp these two wires together. Let's say I just spliced in this blue wire and I ran it right to a bolt on the frame. Okay, we got our multimeter out. And now we're going to check for ground on the same connection we were before. Yep, we got a good ground. We can go here, and we should get ground. Yep, there it goes again. And we should go here. We get ground. But now, if we, like I said, if we go to the power wire, we don't get ground. We don't get continuity because that's a different circuit. But we do have. battery voltage now so the, what I'm trying to say here is when I said a ground is a ground is a ground is a ground I can ground this circuit out to anywhere here as long as the battery ground is connected to 
the vise. But I can only get power through this wire. I cannot run power, I cannot get power out of the vise because the vise is not connected to the power wire, it's only connected to the ground wire. Your car battery should be connected to all the circuits in your car, but not directly to ground. There should be something in between consuming the power before it goes to ground. Or drawing the power actually so I hope that makes sense to you of what I did to fix my problem it was cheap it was easy it cost me like a buck maybe but this is the scientific explanation the best I can do it with my limited resources and I lost my favorite wrench last night in the truck and I'm pretty upset about it but what are you gonna do all right peace I'm out